God's gift and Adam's failure. If humanity died as the result of one person's failure, humanity is in view when Adam sinned and Adam got the death penalty. So humanity in the past tense is being viewed as already having gotten the death penalty because in God's mind, the sentence of death is on the race. So everyone's doomed to die because God already sees that they committed the sin unto physical death in the garden. So, if humanity died as the result of one person's failure, it is certainly true that God's kindness, which is literally grace, and the gift given through the kindness, literally grace, now let me review that because I've been paraphrasing a little bit. In Romans 5.15, I'm reading from the version that we call God's Word. And I'll go back to the beginning. There's no comparison between God's gift and Adam's failure. If humanity died as the result of one person's failure, it's certainly true that God's grace and the gift given to the grace of of that one person, Jesus Christ, has been showered on humanity. Now, now think about this. The past tense is used, you know, has been showered on humanity. Just like the past tense was used with the word death. You know, in other words, humanity already in the mind of God died, was already doomed to death so much that it was already like a death certificate on everybody's account, that you were going to die because you were implicated in the Garden of Eden when Adam sinned. So as far as God's concerned, humanity died as a result of that one failure. But as far as God's gift, which is his grace, his undeserved favor and unmerited kindness is concerned, this gift given through the one man, Jesus Christ, excuse me, this gift given through the one man, Jesus Christ, has been showered on humanity. I mean, it's just, it's just, what can I say? What can I say? Well, what Paul does is he just goes ahead and repeats the thought. He goes into verse 16 and repeats the thought. He says, there's also no comparison between God's gift and the one who sinned. Again, no comparison between God's gift and the one who sinned. The verdict which followed one person's failure condemned everybody, right? The verdict, singular. The sin was eating forbidden fruit. So everybody got condemned by that one act, right? But even after many failures, the gift brought, as in past tense, even after all the failures are in view, the gift brought God's approval. So God's approval is already the reality because Jesus is already the reality as the group identity on behalf of the very group of people that needed the Savior, everybody that was in Adam that sinned without their doing, but through group identity sinned in the Garden of Eden while Jesus came to the Garden of Gethsemane and made a decision to go to the cross, which cross event was going to be a corporate death for the people that deserve to die, namely those of Adam's race, so that when Jesus resurrected, he was going to resurrect because of his righteousness, but give that righteousness to everybody, as expressed in Romans 5.17, which I'm going to briefly read also, because in Romans 5.17 it says, it is certain that death ruled because of one person's failure. Okay? Death, already pictured here as a king, had at one time been on the throne, at one time had been governing everyone's life. So I read again, Romans 5, 17, it's certain that death ruled because of one person's failure. It's even more certain that those, and the Greek word is actually the, but it's in the plural. So the, in the plural, is 
what parallels the statement made in this very version God's Word back to verse 15 where they found the Greek the in the plural that had actually been in context referring to the many nations. Well, they translated that humanity in verse 15. And they also translated the same Greek word the in the plural in verse 19, which in context refers to the many nations, but they translated in this version as humanity. Well, the same Greek word the in the plural is used in verse 17. So I'm saying that to be consistent, the translators would need to translate humanity as I will go ahead and read it that way. Verse 17, it's certain that death ruled because of one person's failure. It's even more certain that humanity in the Greek receiving present tense, which means that the group identity is at this time receiving something that in verse 15 was past and verse 19 is future, but in the middle, verse 17, is the group identity is looked at as receiving this, which is referred to as God's overflowing kindness. Overflowing kindness. And the gift of his approval. The gift of his approval. The Greek word righteousness is used, and these translators have correctly gotten the idea across by talking about God's approval. The gift of God's approval will rule in life. Remember how death was pictured as a king? And now this grace is pictured as a king that gives authority to all people on the basis of Jesus' righteousness to share in his resurrection and eternal life so that the gift will rule in life. Why? Because of one person, Jesus, who's anointing. Just because we're already here, verse 18 says, therefore, everyone was condemned through one failure. Okay? Therefore, everyone was condemned through one failure. And everyone received. <laughs> Everyone was condemned to one failure. Well, everyone received God's life-giving approval. God's life-giving approval through one verdict. That verdict obviously being the verdict of righteousness on the representative of Jesus when he resurrected because of his righteousness. There's the verdict on his perfection. Okay. Verse 18. Therefore, everyone was condemned through one failure, and everyone received God's life-giving approval through one verdict. Verse 19, clearly, through one person's disobedience, humanity became sinful. That's what we've been talking about tonight. Clearly, through one person's disobedience, humanity became sinful. And through one person's obedience, humanity will receive God's approval. Remember it was spoken of in the past tense in verse 15, the present tense in verse 17, and now the future tense in verse 19. So, just for the sake of review, verse 19. Clearly, through one person's disobedience, humanity became sinful. And through one person's obedience, humanity will receive God's approval. Okay, now, even before getting into the last part of Romans 5, which after a break, we can get into Romans 5 verses 20 and 21, which is a lead into Romans 6. I just, I just have to, to take one moment and say in prayer, Father God, I thank you for Jesus who is anointed. I thank you that you didn't leave us with a representative of a mere creature made of flesh and therefore made weak and vulnerable to temptation. No, Father God, you came into the world in the person of Jesus, clothing yourself with humanity, even group humanity, representative humanity. And in your righteousness, you unconditionally guaranteed based upon your work at the cross, 
your confirming righteousness, meaning this, that you resurrected to confirm your righteousness in the role of humanity's representative in your righteousness, which allows us, Father God, to do something I didn't plan to do, and that's to go ahead and read Romans 5, 20 and 21. I just felt led to do this because I felt like it would make sense in context to the very prayer. Romans 5, 20 and 21. Rules were added to increase the failure. Rules were added to increase the failure. But where sin increased, God's kindness increased even more. The Greek word could be rendered superabounded. In other words, rules were added to increase the failure, but where sin increased, God's kindness superabounded. Increased way more. Verse 21. As sin ruled by bringing death, God's kindness now rules by bringing death. God's approval. Okay? Verse 21, as sin ruled by bringing death, 